everybody, welcome back. We're continuing reading of the Tafsir. We are dealing with Surah Al-Baqarah 283. Um, and before we get started, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay, we're on page 105. Rather, he should have a good attitude and be forbearing easy going with everyone i have really started trying to be easy going uh way more than i used to way more than i used to before i i think i i think when i i, I added a tension to an atmosphere or a lust tension and now it's turned to a more peaceful one so if it's peaceful i mean it's easy and i've been trying to be easy with everyone right and patient in the face of any annoyance he encounters from people in obedience to the command of Allah and in hope of attaining his reward. Then Allah enjoined them to establish prayer and give zakah because of what has been discussed above, namely that prayer is indicative of sincere devotion to Allah and zakah is indicative of kindness towards other people. So. You put your money where your mouth is, but you also put your mouth where your money is in the same token, right? That's how I see it. Um, yeah, I I feel good when I organize my schedule to make it so I could do most of the prayers. Yeah, right. And then if I if I can't do it, I make up for them with, you know, how you're supposed to make up for it. And monetary-wise, I support a little one in Rwanda and another one in Sierra Leone. Like I said, um, I want to support a little one in Guatemala, Honduras, or Mexico. Uh, the next opportunity that I get. But I can't do that until I know the economy is not going to lock back down again. Because um, you, you, that's intense. It's, it's That's an intense situation. And I never want to have to cut off aid. Um, I stood in the food line and kept my donations going, so I was very happy about that when we were on the height of the lockdown and when things were just crashing in the economy. Um, so, yes, I make sure to do that. So I organize my schedule, showing severe devotion to Allah, and I give as a call um, to the little ones, little adorable kids. Then after these are good commands, which if one who has insight and wisdom ponders them, he will realize that Allah enjoined them upon his slaves out of kindness and mercy towards them. And he took a covenant from you, but you turned away, not caring all, all about the matter. It may be that the one who turns away does so with the intention of coming back. But these people had no desire to come back to these commands. We seek refuge with Allah from misguidance. Yes, I, I I definitely think of the maker more. It's definitely like, give me a guidepost. Give me a way I can interpret a sign. Where are you supposed to go? You're supposed to go left, you're supposed to go right. You make the maker your compass, right? Except a few of you, this exception is noted, lest anyone think that all of them turned away. This tells us that Allah protected a few of them and made them steadfast. If, you know what? It feels good to be steadfast. There was a, I, I, I really did feel that, again, during the pandemic when we were really into it. When I was in the food line and people were starting to act a little bit crazy. There's that moment where I was like, stand still. Hold your, hold your position. Be calm. Breathe normal. Stand your ground. Wait for your box. Right? And I did. And for me, that was a moment to be steadfast. And to not get doom and gloom. And to not let it override my senses. 284. And remember we took your covenant saying, Do not shed one another's blood or drive one another from your homes. And you confirmed it. And you bear witness to that. Yet, here you are, killing one another and driving a group of your own people out of their homes. 
helping their enemies against them in sin and transgression. If they come to you as captives, you ransom them when it was forbidden for you to expel them in the first place. Do you believe only in part of the book and deny another part of it? Now, see, that's a good part right there because I mentioned this before. There are people who, like, just look at the New Testament, right? They completely ignore the old. And there's this battle between the old and the new. I'm serious. It's crazy. The punishment. Well, I shouldn't be rude. Uh, it's not... It's it's interesting that they would break apart, is my point, right? You would think that they would utilize both, because it's in one book, and it, they build upon each other. So to ignore one is to be incomplete, that's my point. The punishment for those among you who do this will be nothing but disgrace in this world, and on the day of resurrection... They will be condemned to the harshest punishment. For Allah is not unaware of what you do. See that? I... I uh, again, what's beautiful about that part right there is that it has instantly implying the positive and the negative. Right? Again, it's one of my favorite feelings I get. It's like you look at it and you automatically think of the good and also the negative. Because you're like, if you do bad, Allah sees you're going to own up for it. If you do good, it's not going to get recognized by the entire world. But the effort, nonetheless, is there. And it gets recorded. That's a sense of the scales of feeling good, right? You, humans, we like to see scales of, okay, on this side or that side. You know, you can think of it as like, okay, it's it's getting there on the scale, whether you see it or not. These are the people who buy the life of this world at the cost of the hereafter. Their penalty will not be reduced, nor will they be helped. See, now, I've started to think about that too, because sometimes I think like, oh, I wish I could have a giant castle. And I could do all this stuff, you know? And it's like, mm, if you got that, you'd be tested by it, and I might fail the test. And that's going to, like, take away from something that I could have had in the hereafter when a more smaller, not castle will do just fine. You know what I mean? So sometimes we can want something, and then you have to think, like, could you really handle it? Like, no. Same time, like, I also thought, man, I really wish I could have a bull from Spain. Right? Like, I wish I could have, like, a ranch with a bull in the front. And he's, like, one of those Spanish bulls, a black bull. And he's just big and muscular, just beautiful, roaming in my front lawn. I don't care if he steps on the flowers. I just want to look at it because it's, like, so much... I don't know. It's cool thinking that if a criminal comes over my yard, this bull is going to, like, run him over. He might just stand there, too. But so having a beast of that size and its own separate will uh, is actually to me pretty cool but again I would fail and be like well what if I don't take care of it right what if you know I don't uh, trim its hooves well or you know what if it gets a medication like could I really keep up the responsibility and then if I didn't treat that animal well it would count against me if I died right it would be like well if I die when I die and I'm accounted for do you know what I mean so it's like you know you have to be careful what you desire because if you get it whew, you might have done better in your overall scaling if you would have never asked for it right so that's one example which I'm sure there's many that you can think of too the deeds referred to in these verses are the deeds of those who lived in Medina at the time of the revelation before the prophet's mission began al Aus and al Khazraj who became the Ansar, were polytheists who used to fight one another according to the customs of the Jahiliya pre-Islamic period. Jahiliya. Okay. I like how he reiterates a term for us so that we can see it good. Interesting. Okay, fam. I hope you enjoyed. 
I mean, it's wonderful as always. Very helpful and educational. Very structured.